Hey guys, I'm so excited to share this episode that I recorded with my dad. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick heads up that the microphone audio that I tried to record was corrupted and lost. I feel like we have some really strong content in this episode. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share that with you. However, the audio is a little rough and we just have camera audio. So um, I'm going to try to clean that up as good as I can in post. Um, so it won't be as crisp as normal. Uh, and I uh, ask you to stick with it because I feel like the stuff that we talk about is, is still pretty good. The song we play at the end has has good mics, though. I feel like that um, really translates over. But um, anyway, stick with it because I feel like this is a great conversation. Um, anyway, we'll get you, without further ado, over to the interview with my dad. Thanks, guys. Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Adam from Millage Custom Guitars and the N Plus One Podcast. I'm so glad that you could tune in today. Um, today, once again, I'm joined by a very special guest and I guess I'm making the rounds through all of my family members. I got um, Bethany in and I got my wife in and now we got my dad in. Today I'm joined by my father. Um, he's been my dad my whole life. <laughs> David Miller. Welcome. Hey. Um, and so I, I talked to my dad and I said, Hey, I wanted to do a podcast with you because he's a great musician. He's been a worship leader for, I don't know, 3000 years or something like that. I don't know. He's very old. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but what do you want to talk about? Cause this isn't about this podcast is a little bit about my passions and obsessions, but it's also about our guests, passions and obsessions. And he said, well, I could talk about that, but I really want to talk about the thing that we've argued about more than anything else in our entire life, no doubt, which is the concept of doing less in music. Yeah. Less is more. Less is more. Uh, you know, sometimes it's referred to as a kiss, keep it simple, stupid, um, or less is more, or my dad just yells at me over and over again. Do less, do less, do less, do less, do less, the opposite, do less, do less. The opposite of overplaying. Right. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I try to do. Right. Um, and so I wanted to get into it today with my dad. And we have some examples. I'm going to warn you ahead of time. He has, he, he came prepared with examples, but they are um, YouTube videos. And I'm not going to embed them inside this video. I'm going to put links in the description. So when we talk about these videos, I don't want to get copyright striked or claimed or anything. So we're going to put those links in the description, but you can talk about them. You, you played them to me, so sure. I know what we're talking about. Yeah. My, 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 yeah. my memory is fresh. And I'll put the links in the description so you can, when we get to those sections, you can click and you can watch those videos that we're talking about. And then, I'll, then you can come back and, and, and hear what we're talking about. To start off, why, what is what would you consider the, the philosophy of doing less or less is more? What, what is at its core? Why is it so important? And why are you so passionate about it? It's hard to do. And if you're a musician, uh, you're going to relate to this. If anybody's ever talked to you about it, um, it is really hard to do. And so there is a saying, I don't know who said this, but there's a saying that there are only two kinds of, com of musicians who can do less. No, the first kind is people that are just learning, people that are just starting, beginners. And then the second kind of musicians that can do less are pros. And so that's something that I've heard and something that I now believe. And I just think that um, less is more. There's this, if you go listen, go listen to the stuff that you love and then ask yourself, what's going on in this, in this song? Is the band, uh, are, is everybody playing? Are they just play, 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 play? And, and, or are they holding off? It's like, like what, creating space in a song and allowing the song to breathe and featuring the song and not necessarily, you know, as a musician, me and everything that I know that I can do, capable of doing less, keeping it simple and uh, trying in spite of ourselves to, you know, our own desire to like, want to like keep everything complicated to try to uncomplicate a song. Yeah. Um, you know, you might have heard the philosophy of uh, leave them wanting more. This is kind of the, along the same vein is, is you pull back, you scale back, you take what you were going to play and you chop a third off of it, or in my dad's case, two thirds off of it. 
um, and you play that instead. And you know, kind of like what we talked about with Phil, this is something you need to practice because when it comes to playing live, we are just gonna, if you're not practiced in it, you're gonna just default back to what your nat natural inclination is. And I know that for me, and, and we've, I've been a musician for 27 years, um, for me, I know that my first reaction, my gut instinct is to overplay, to play a lot. And it usually sounds good because I'm a decent yeah. musician. <laughs> but then it sounds better if we, if we scale back. And then kind of like John C. Brown was talking about with acting, um, it's such a big part of it is listening. You've got to listen. And it doesn't work if you're not listening to the band, listening to who, what the music director wants, um, or if you're the music, direct, music director, thinking about the whole band as a whole and not just your parts. And it's so easy to get stuck in your own head of what I got to do. These are my things, especially if you're the music director. But as the music director, if it's a worship team or a rock band or whatever, you got to think of the big picture and how it all works together and how it... Um, you're trying to serve the song right. and not your own skills and all the things that you can do. There's a saying, and you kind of touched on it. Somebody told me, don't give them everything that you got all at once. Just, you know. This is not the movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. This is music, and we just give them yeah. a little here, a little there. Um, and, and I've found the best performances I've been to have been because they, they give you the samples of the big stuff, and then they come back to it. So it, like they said, they leave you wanting more. Yeah. Um, so how did you first start being concerned about doing less and wanting to, to this less is more philosophy. What was your gateway drug, I like to say? So when I was a young kid, I was starting to really listen to music and I'm old enough so that I remember when there wasn't rock and roll. And then rock and roll happened um, in the late 50s, early 60s, and then rock and roll really changed and it was really cool. Um, but it just started off with uh, you know, bands do stuff and I'm listening and up until that time in my life there had been hymns and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then rock and roll happened and, and I'm listening and there are chords that I'd never heard in a hymn, like a, like a seventh chord or something like that. I was like, what is that? You know, I'm listening and it drew me in and less is more is kind of one of those things where as I'm listening and realizing, you know, not just kind of you know, bringing it all in, uh, the thing that, the one thing that I remember that just like, what is that, was Sly and the Family Stone, dance to the music, okay? And this is a more is more song until it's not. And so this band, they're just going, they got horns, they got guitar, they got organ, they got bass, they got, you they know, like, all this stuff. They had like 13 people in the band yeah. or something. It was know, and they are just band. all bringing up, uh, uh -huh. bringing it, yep. and then they drop it down to just clapping and there's voices and they're going just kind of this weird uh, little thing. They're all, they're all making And I never heard anything like that, but they stopped all that stuff and brought it down to like one thing. And that was like, what is that? And then, cool. you know, Sly goes, well, you might like to hear my organ. And so then the organ comes in, bass comes in little by little, all the pieces come in and, and you start to understand what is happening in this band, how this song's being put together. And a part that really grabbed me was that moment where they stopped this more is more sound and went down to this less and more sound. And you hear that all the time now. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a thing in music, this, they'll say this, the musicians uh, will say, bring it down. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're just like, they're intentionally doing less so that they can do more later in a song. We were watching Austin City Limits last night. So first of all, I'm going to put a link in to Sly and the Family Stone. We were watching Austin City Limits last night, and I, I, the guy, the name is, excuse me, what was it? Uh, John Baptiste. John Baptiste. And this band, they had it all, and they were hot. They were fire, okay? Yeah, they were. And they were bringing it, and the crowds, into, and they, they bring in a uh, like a like a New Orleans-style brass band, and it's this concophonous, loud, crazy yeah. mess. It's awesome. And then 30 seconds later or a minute later, they brought it down and it was just drums and piano and bass. 
and it was so funky and so yeah, wow. awesome. And it, it, I got, I literally got chills watching it because yeah. it was so intense. And the more is more was cool. But when they brought it down to the less, it was more cool. And it allowed them to build it back. Oh man, it was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. Just go watch that. Phenomenal. <laughs> so what do you think might be some misconceptions about doing less and how to do it? Uh, that it's boring, that it's slow, that it's uh, why, uh, you know, what's the point of doing all this? And, you know, we need to, you know, I've got this skill that I've worked really hard to develop right. and, Definitely. and I'm just going to like, you know, do what I want to do. Right. And don't tell me not, you know, don't tell me what I'm. And so a lot of musicians, you know, we're musicians and we deal with ego and we deal, we can deal with pride and stuff like yeah. that. And to learn how to let go right. and just allow the other people in the band to have a place. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I got all this fancy gear. I got this new guitar. I got the pedals. I got oh the amps. Oh, my God. Pedals. And, and I this... want to. This guy is a pedal guy. Check right? out my YouTube channel. I show it on there sometimes. And but. I would love for him to turn every one of them off. It was, uh, okay, maybe yeah, not. Except for, then you see, you hear how I play them, and you're like, you know what? Actually, that sounds pretty cool. No. Uh, 100% of the time that happens. I'm like, just trust me, and it, it works out every time. Yeah. yeah. And so he was talking about misconceptions, and he said he said it was that one of the misconceptions is boring. And... Sometimes we'll be playing together and he'll be yelling at me, do less, do less, do less. He doesn't yell, sometimes he yells. But, um, and sometimes I think to myself, if I was doing any less, I'm not even playing and why do I even, why would I even bother being here? But, I, but like I said, the John Baptiste, the, the funkiest thing that they did, all the other musicians, their hands were off their guitars, you know, they're, they're clapping, they're, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and it was so cold and so funky. And mm -hmm. we have to remember it's in service of the song. Yeah. And it's gotta be. Yeah. And and sometimes you gotta tell your your boneheaded, you know, music director, well, just listen to what I got first. You know, I'm still working it out. But sometimes you gotta listen, most of the time you gotta listen to them and say, Yeah, okay, I'll I'll dial it back. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's kind of a just like I said, it's hard to do. It's mm -hmm. really hard to do. And just trying to find that way to do it there's so much there's so it's so intentionally listening what's listening. going on here and am i taking up all the sonic space or am i like one of the things that i do when i start a song and i'm leading a song with any band that i'm in i'm in a couple of bands i will start it and i will just get the rhythm going with maybe the riff and, and all this and when the drums kick in when the bass kicks in i try to do half of what i was doing you know, and so it's a good, not, good you know, just try to do at least half of what I'm doing. And I and to think about um, doing less and how can I do less and how can I allow the song to breathe. And uh, I thought the, the fellow that you had, you mentioned him earlier, Phil, Phil. Phil, what an incredible insight he had into that various thing of how to how to learn not to overplay. So if you missed that episode, Phenomenal. me and Phil, we talked about the blues, both listening to it and playing it. And one of his tips was to only play, if you're playing a lead, only play while breathing out. And that's exactly what doing less is because if you're just shredding, you know, which, you know, sometimes is cool. And I think most of the time, all most of us can agree is kind of, can be annoying. Um, but one of the ways you can, you can dial that back is by using Phil's trick of, of if you're only playing when you're breathing out, you're automatically doing less because you're, you're, you're all playing half the time. Yeah, and he tied it to horns, and he tied it to vocalists who can only make music when they are breathing out. And so, you know, I'm obviously I've tried doing this because I watched it. I was like, oh, you so, know, and it, it not only is it hard, but just to not do, just to even like listen to music and think anything that's on, you know, listen to it and go, you know, what would I do here if I was breathing, you know, and so what are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced besides fighting with me for 27 years about music um, in both teaching yourself to do less and also teaching you, the people in your band to do less? Because I know, because I've played in bands with him, that he actively preaches this to the people in his yeah, bands. Yeah. So it's kind of a weird thing. You know, um, if you have beginners in a band, um, 
your band can probably sound pretty good because they just can't do more. But yeah. we grow in right. our abilities and in our strengths. And that transition time from being a beginner to being more advanced, there's this thing where we've got this new thing. And I, you know, I'm a bass player and I wanna, I wanna like do all these notes, passing notes and all this other rhythm stuff, you know? And if you do that and every member of the band, it's just not gonna sound great. It's gonna sound, the thing I was thinking of as I was thinking about this is like, think about a punk band. And a punk band, um, they pretty much, punk is more is more. 100% more right. is more. Loud, but, annoying. But they can get away with it because right. most of the time it's like a bass, a drum, a vocalist, right. and a guitar that's just cranked and they're just going right. at it, okay? But think about bands that I'm in, maybe there might be six, seven people in this band. And if everybody played like that, right. it would just be, or even put two punk bands together. Right. You think about how horrible that would be. You know? Right, you don't often see, his point is you don't often see a, a punk band that's a seven piece. Right, uh, you know they're usually pretty small, and when they did get big, they turned into ska bands, and that was a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so yeah. So the answer to your question, what are the challenges? I would just say, um, can you know, as people develop and as they get better, to that to try to teach them how to do less. It's mm -hmm. a challenge. It's really a challenge. And I would say that a big part of that is help it like like we talked about seeing the big picture of, of the whole song and if you can get if you're trying to preach you know less is more to your whole band you know if you can get them to step back and see the finished product of them doing less you know it it, it kind of opens their eyes sometimes especially with beginner musicians or you know like you said sometimes you're a beginner and you can't do much and then you start to learn you learn cool licks and cool you know you learn these yeah. and then you're like I want to incorporate that. Yes, you do. And and you need to incorporate that because you need to learn it how and when. And our goal as a band director is to is to guide and direct them into when it's appropriate and when it's not. Because sometimes it is appropriate, um, and most of the times it's not. Yeah, I remember. I don't know if this is on topic or not, but I remember you had, I went over to your house and I was like trying to figure out. We were trying to figure out how to use this pedal that could do these ambient tones. Okay. Okay. And we were playing together, and I'm like telling you how to set this pedal, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm playing through it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you, and so when we were there, in my mind, there, uh, you said, um, "This I never got this kind of tone out of my pedal," mm -hmm. and I thought it's because you play too much through it and you don't allow the pedal to 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 breathe. So I don't know how you're going to interject that into no, your. It's perfect. Um, when I play, I have really specific things I'm trying to do. And, uh, you know, maybe I need to expand a little bit more and, you know, try to show you need to increase a little more. Sorry. <laughs> My father. I can't help being who I am. All right. So I, he, I, when he says I've told, it's only maybe been like 20,000 times I've told him to do less. He says it's a million. It's No, it's more like 20,000. Yeah, I think add a zero on that. Every time we play. Every time At we play. Least. Although last night, I will say, we were jamming, and he didn't tell me to do less. He did tell me to stop walking all over my wife, who was playing the ukulele. Her instrument wasn't very loud, and she wasn't playing very loud. Um, um, he's like, hey, you're, you're stepping all over her, but, uh, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, what about doing the whole topic of doing less? What about it fills your bucket? Like, why do you even do it? God, music can be so great. And it's such a gift from God. Uh, music it's like a gift from God and we get to experience it we get to do it it's like something that feeds us if you're a musician that being able to do it feeds you you know and um, I don't remember your question what fills your bucket yeah exactly uh, just being able to do music fills my bucket you know I of course I'm a worship leader so I do that in church and so when I can have people join in and participate and you know that they are uh, in that moment. You know, we're all together in this one moment and we are enjoying this thing that's happening. And it's uh, maybe the same group of people will never be in that room again, you know. And But for that one moment that we have together where we're doing something that is not mean, you know. Right. And, um, and I'm not saying that music can't be angry. And so I was just listening to... Uh, Creep, okay? My radio head. 
which was, it's such a tremendous, fantastic yeah. song. It's got some language, uh, but it's like such a example of going from less is more to crushing guitar that is, so, but notice when they do that guitar, when they do that guitar, he hits that guitar once and he lets that thing ring out. Right. So yeah. even the big parts of Creep, when that guitar, when that guitar comes in, chunk, 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 chunk. It's so good. It's awesome. It's one of the great songs of all time. Yes, I'll put is. a link in the description. Even when they come in and they get big, um, it's not, it's not like the Weezer thing where it's all downbeats. It's, they're kind of open chords and sometimes they're, they're adding on a suspended or something like that. And it, there's still space, there's still room on that, you know, because, you know, it's, even though the guitars are big, it's kind of about the guitars there, the lyric really shines. And I thought it was interesting how at the end, so here's his band, and at the end, all of a sudden, they they bring it way down, but it comes way down to a piano. Mm -hmm. So so here's his piano taking it out. That piano hadn't been in there before. The guitar that was doing that crushing stuff hadn't even played before until it was his time. So everybody in the band is doing what that song needs mm -hmm. and not necessarily what they're capable of. And the result is that the whole song tells a story. And it's a story that even my nine-year-old son was like, I like this song, even though it's sad, Yeah, you know? Um, and he kind of got that it was a sad, melancholy song. Yeah. And he could feel that emotion despite all the, the rock and the noise and all that stuff. Um, this is one, and I know you maybe have some stories. Do you have any um, bad experiences with doing less besides fighting with me for 27 years? Uh, or maybe a specific time where we fought and we got out of hand or um, bad experiences. Um, I, I would just say it's a challenge. It's okay. So I've had musicians that I've worked with and um, who didn't understand this. And so mm -hmm. they, you know, they'll play this stuff, you know, and it's like, uh, it's kind of like mommy, mommy, look what I can do kind of a thing, you know, and that's, you know, kind of the nature of who we are. And I remember uh, specifically a keyboard player um, that played with me and he got so frustrated because he had skill and um, his conversation with me was like, why do you keep holding me back? Mm. And my answer was, the only thing I've ever tried to do with you is to help you sound like a pro, mm. sound like a pro professional musician. That's what I've been trying to do with you. And, you know, it was kind of like he forgave me, but he never forgave me, you know, kind of thing, because we are who we are, right? You know, and so, Amen. and I will tell you this, this whole thing of doing less, it's not for everybody. You know, some people just are, that's not who they are, you know, and so. They can't or won't and, or and whatever. Sometimes a song is more is more. And when it is, that's what needs to happen. But when a song needs to be less is more, then absolutely work on doing that. Yep. It's a jump. It is a jump. Now, this is one, we've kind of already said it a little bunch of times, at least in my opinion. What would you consider to be the Dave Miller uh, do less signature move? So like I said, starting a song and then dropping out and trying to do like half. And then if I get there, maybe half of the half. And just to see, you know, how far I can take this down to where I'm still pushing this song forward and being part of it. And, um, you know, that's the challenge. It's just trying to, trying to find that spot where the song really takes off because we're not making it into this mess. Yeah. Well, I'll say from my experience, your signature move is to kind of like, we'll, we'll get together and we play guitar every time we get together. And we'll basically play the song almost all the way through. Yeah. And he'll say, okay, let's do that again. And I want you to do half of what you're doing. You yeah. know? And, you know, because of who I am, it's not going to be half, but he plants that seed. He puts that in you. He gets yeah. you the challenge. And we do it again. Yeah. We'll play the song. We'll play this worship song, you know, all the way from the go to the end. And I think it sounds great. And it probably did sound great because we're both good musicians. Mm -hmm. But he, for fun, 
let's, you know, let's do it again. We're going to practice doing less. Hey, give this challenge, do, do it again. We'll do it halfway, you know, do half as much as you're doing. I think that yeah. to me is your signature move. One of the things that, before you go on your next question, one of the things that I remember, so communicating this, this is another challenge, communicating this to someone, what does that mean? Right. And for me and you, yeah. one time on a Sunday morning, I said, I want you to sound like Sonny Landreth. Joey Landreth. Joey Landreth. Yeah. Right. Once you sound like Joey Landreth, and it was like a light bulb came on. You were like, oh, okay. Now I know what you're talking about. Yes. You know? And he, because he would get so frustrated with me, like, right. leave me alone. And then when I said that, he just right. clicked. And I, I, I would just jump in and say um, that the clear communication of what you're trying to um, express to your bandmates to me is so critical. And when I direct a band, I try to be as clear as possible. So like if you tell the drummer, oh yeah, it's just a little busy, it's kind of weird. Then the drummer gets confused to get in their head. If you can be really specific and you can say, um, hey, you know, on the verse, you know, you need to come down and maybe just a, a hi-hat and a, and a snare. Um, and then on the chorus, that's when we get big. If you can, you know, I know for me as a musician, if you give me specific directions, it's much easier to follow than a vague direction like do less. It's like, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, if you tell them a specific direction, hey, on the bridge, try this. On the chorus, try that. Um, or you played, you know, some stuff and it was really busy there uh, in this specific section. Um, it, it gives them a direction that they can follow, but also lets them know the overall scope of the music that you're trying to yeah. to tell them. Yeah. And I'll tell you, you haven't always been great at this. No, I'm and terrible at it. And this is the this is part of the journey of uh, no, it's how long have you been playing guitar? For 50 years. 50 years. Yeah. You know, even 50 years, you can still grow and improve. And you've gotten so much better at your communication. Yeah. I'll just tell you, because I've been in bands with you for all of my music. Yeah. As long as I can play guitar, I've been in, in playing music yeah. together. And I've played in bands with you even recently, and your communication has gotten so much better. Um, you know, he used to think, well, like, if I hurt their feelings, that's their problem. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I want to treat you like a pro. And a pro can, you can tell them exactly what to do, and they do it. But and Not every, the people you're playing with aren't pros. I'm learning volunteers, that usually. Uh, people have feelings, and they can have their feelings hurt. And... Uh, and some of those people are related to you. And you have to be, you have you to have to be loving and kind and, you know, and build them up. And, uh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the relationship is everything. Relationship for sure. Yeah. We're talking about communication and you had a specific example you wanted to point out. So one of the things that, that you can do is, uh, you can uh, go on YouTube and just, uh, search for overplaying or maybe even the phrase less is more, overplaying is gonna get you a lot more hits. And, but, uh, so I found one and I'm trying to work with my band and it was a drum uh, overplaying video. And what it is, is a guy playing uh, Tom Petty and he's showing, uh, they do this Petty song. Uh, is it already. Free Fallen? I think it might have been Free Falling. Yeah, yeah. it's Free Falling. And so he's doing this song, and he's like, um, he's like explaining what's going on in his in his head as he's doing the song, or mostly as he's not doing the song. Right. So and he starts off, he's not even playing, and then when he comes in, he does. It, it's like maybe one fill every chorus, you know. And so you know, it's not much at right. all. And so so that that kind of that you showed me that video, and it's kind of a yeah. tongue tongue in cheek video about maybe what's going through um, a drummer's head while playing that song. And we, but when we were listening to that song yesterday, um, that song, you're gonna put the link, I'm gonna in, put the link yeah. in and also share it on the Facebook group. We're talking about Free Falling by Tom Petty. And that song is a masterclass in um, doing less and do less, having less be more because that's the, the classic three three chord song. There is literally three chords. There's not much going on, right? But everybody's heard this it's song. It's so Why? simple, but yeah. it's so powerful because because it's all about it's in service to the song in general. And there's a guitar solo in that song, and it's the lamest guitar solo of all time to play. You know, bang 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 bang. No follow ups. It's so hard for me when I play that. 
to not bang bang gang 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 you know to not add more to it and then he only plays that every other time through the chords so if you're this guitar if you're playing guitar solo on that you have to play that and then wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait because that's what the song calls for and that's what the song needs yeah. that song is all about that singable chorus you know and it's one of the iconic sing-along songs because they, everything in that song is in service to the song, I think. Yeah. And, you know, Tom Petty was just a master of writing, yeah. you know, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and from the drums perspective, one of the things, if you go study Tom Petty in that band, they were known for their drums. They had this drum sound that everybody tried to sound like. And so that. to think about this, to think about that, the drummer, why? Why? Not only it was a drum sound, but it was also his ability to do less, you know. In this journey of doing less, do you have maybe a guilty pleasure? Um, something that uh, that when you do it, it just it gives you a, the, the grins? Uh, so my guilty pleasure, I guess, would be listening to um, music that I maybe have never heard or music that's very different and just enjoying it uh, for whatever it is. I'm in this thing right now. I just, uh, I don't know how I got to it, but I was listening to African praise and worship. And that music is more and it's more. And I'm having a ball with it. It's so much fun and I'm appreciating. So I'm just saying less is more is not for everything, for every time. Um, sometimes more is more is the right appropriate thing to do. And so, um, yeah, it's, that's my guilty and pleasure. One of my favorite bands of all time is was a small, they called it outlaw rock band called Briartone. Yeah. And they were they were definitely a more is more band. They, were. they would start off the show and they would just punch you in the face with their music over and over and over. And it was so good. But they also knew when to bring it down, you know, uh, to make those hard pop parts hit even harder. Yeah. But they were definitely right in your face right from the get-go and they were so good um, yeah. but you know you can't have if you if it's all more is more and you, you had this example you mentioned this you um i don't know if i'm jumping ahead no, but you, you wanted to, you talked about the, the the clash right yeah what was that song uh should i stay or should yeah. i go it's like a it's a three chord song no it's a two chord song Da, 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 da. Every once in a while, they do throw in a third chord. Um, but especially, okay, listen to the intro. I'm going to drop a link in the description. Listen to the intro, and it, it's so iconic, right? You hear the clash, should I stay or should I go? And it's so iconic in the intro, and there's there's nothing to it. You know, he goes, yeah. Bonic! Like, what kind of fill is that? Bonic! Um, yeah. And that song, that whole song, is, is, is even being one of the iconic punk songs, is so straightforward. And then at the end, they get into the double time, blah, 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 and yeah. your point was, how much would this song suck if that was the whole song? Yeah. If they did that the yeah. whole song, the whole time. Yeah, you wouldn't even listen to it. Right. It's like a nothing song. And, and that part, you enjoy that Except part. Except now you set up that moment right. with less, and right. now this moment really carries something. Right. Yeah. And I just thought that was a great example. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what is, as your time being a music director, being a musician, and pre preaching, doing less, and less is more to your bandmates. What do you consider your best moment, your favorite moment? When you look back and then, man, that was just so good. I don't know, maybe that moment when I talked to you about, you know, I gave you uh, Joey Landreth, and the light went on for you, and you understood what I was looking for. It didn't, it did, you know, just being able to communicate and to, yeah. Okay. Here's another one. So I was talking to my band and, uh, and I was talking about the fact that I'm always going after something in them. If I see a gift, if I see something in them, I want for them to be able to have every bit of that gift. And so I can, I recognize this, you know, stuff. Maybe there's a talent there. It's like, Ooh, listen to that. That's really cool. And I'll go back and reinforce that with them. But sometimes it's the opposite, where you hear something and, and you're like telling them, let's just pull back, let's just pull back. And I asked him one time, I said, you know, I'm really direct, I'm really, you know, I can be really, you know, and they said, but no, no, you're trying to grow us and, you know, you're trying to make us the best that we can be. And for them to see that in me, to understand, to understand that 
Um, yeah, this is, I want what, I want that big, what that, whatever that gift is in you, whatever that is, I want you to have all of it, you know? And so not only is I'm, you know, I'm band director, but I'm teaching. I'm always trying to lift up my people, build them up and make them better. And I think musically, you know, the hottest band we ever had was when we were at Heart of the Valley and we had the Cheneys and we had Sheena um, and we had uh, Austin Mitchell, who was yeah, nine years old on drums. And to this day, he's the top three drummers I've ever played with. Yeah. He's nine, you know, and that band, man, we knew how to, we knew how to rock. We knew all down and we worshiped hard. Um, but I felt like, you know, especially with your direction, um, you know, we had a band that was most of the time in a pretty, in a pretty tight spot. The band could really cook. It yeah. was a great band. And I think for me, um, looking back at that time, you know, my, um, my intent at that time was I want the hottest band. I want the hottest music that we can do. And so I had to learn that that is not the most important thing not, in church. Right. The most important thing in church is to have moments where we are actually communicating with God and letting him know who he is, who we, what he's done in our life. You learned some things. Yeah. And, and I, well, I would say that the, that, you know, the band was fire, but you know, we all, I think grew during that time and we grew afterwards. You know, Rob, Rob, we still love each other. Yeah. It's crazy. It's yeah. amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure Austin is a professional musician now and Rob and Sheena are worship leaders and, um, you know, everybody's kind of gone yeah. on yeah, we and they're done. still using their gift, right? which is something I'm really intent on is making sure that the people that I mentor um, have a gift that they go on to use. You know, and don't just set it aside for important. This episode of the N Plus One podcast has been brought to you by the N Plus One podcast Facebook group. When we first launched, we had some growth in the Facebook group, but that has tapered out. We've been staying strong about 30 people in the Facebook group, and I don't know who's checking that or who's on there, but I feel like this is a great place where we can share our own passions and obsessions with each other. Yeah, sure, I do post about the episodes in that group, and I also um, share um, information about the episodes in the group, like if there's like a, a link that we talk about in the show. Sometimes I'll share that on the Facebook group, but I don't just want the Facebook group to be about the things we talk about in the show. I want the Facebook group to be a place where we can be a community together and talk about our passions that we are going through as we can grow together and share together and talk about the things that fuel us. In the group, I'm talking about guitars I'm working on. I'm talking about concerts that we're visiting. I wanna know what you are into. I want to know the paintings that you're painting, the mountains that you're climbing, um, the concerts you're going to. Um, so check out the Facebook group. You can find it on Facebook. Um, if you just do a search for N plus one podcast, obsessed with obsession, Facebook group, it should pop right up. The other thing is once you get onto the Facebook group, one thing I would love to hear from you is what kind of guests you are interested in hearing from. You know, this podcast is my podcast. And so sometimes I'm afraid that it's going to be too guitar centric because I'm a guitar player. Um, and I have a lot of guests on my radar and I look at my potential guest list and I feel like there's a lot of guitar centric guests, you know, without your guys's intervention and your input, it, you know, it might be that way. And, you know, for me, that's fine. I want to know what you guys are interested in. I want to know who you're interested in hearing from. What are your hobbies? What are your passions? What kind of things are you interested in hearing about? If you have a potential guest that you think might be interested uh, in hearing from, let me know and also reach out to them and say, hey, you got to get on the M plus one podcast because I want to hear about it. So that'd be great. Anyway, that's it for now. Let's get back to the show and we will get going this is one that um that i like to ask you so someone's been um, listening to this and they they look down at their own playing maybe a recording of them and they're like oh man i play too much yeah what advice would you give to i want you to give me two pieces of advice one for their own playing and one for um directing others to try to incorporate doing less i don't know just try to listen Listen, listen, listen is so important. Uh, what's happening in this song? What, what needs to happen in this song? 
what doesn't need to happen in this song? And then how can we make this song really work? You know, and think about that. And so get out of your, the thing that you love to do and the thing that you're, that you want to do the most. I mean, like with, with Adam here, he's like a, he's like, he'll be playing the rhythm. He plays lead. He's got the bass going. Now he's got, uh, like I said, the lead part going, you know, you want to hear Adam listen to his intro song and, uh, and you'll hear what he's capable of. And, but that was, uh, that one, one, guy, that was one take, one take, <laughs> one guy doing music. And, uh, you couldn't pull that off if it was a band. I mean, right. maybe you could add drums, maybe you could add bass, but then to try to add a vocal over that no, he's, he's, he's got, it's too, too much going on. Right. You couldn't add a lead on top of that too much going on. Right. And, but it works fine for one, right. one guitar. You know, so yeah, what so, was your question? So advice for beginners, and so the, yeah. the advice there is that the more instruments you add, the less each one needs to do. And that's uh, that's hard to tell people, you know, because you, maybe you have a acoustic guitar, bass, drums, you know, um, and now you add an electric guitar, you know. Well, now you, let's say we add another acoustic guitar. Now we have P and piano. Yeah. And and there is a place where you can get all that to work together, but everyone needs to work harder to play less to make it yeah. not just sound like mushy garbage. Yeah. It's actually the very thing that I say when I'm adding a musician into a band. And I'll, I'll just go and I'll say exactly what he just said. You know, understand with this now, we need to figure out a way to give this person a chance to play. And so we're all, right. you know, you, you know I'm, I'm thinking about Bruce Springsteen, okay? This guy had a huge band, Jeez, right? Like 40 and I think his band. drummer was Max Weinberg, okay? Right. Okay, he's got a small kit, okay, and when they advertised uh, for a drummer, you know, and, and Bruce put an ad, I believe, in the paper, he asked for a drummer, he, you know, he said drummer, he's looking for a drummer, and uh, and then he said, he gave the name, and I can't remember the guy, the guy was in Cream, uh, Ginger Baker, okay, he said, you know, he's, I, he says, no Ginger Bakers, right, <laughs> and so what he's saying is, and Ginger Baker was the guy, if you ever see his kit, it's gigantic, right. and he's a more as a more drummer, and and that's not what Springsteen was looking for. He knew he was going to have a big band, and so he needed a drummer that could stay in the pocket, keep the time, keep the band together, and uh, no ginger bacon. So I, I remember one time we saw we were in Modesto and we saw Leland when he was just yeah. right when he came out, and that was at Calvary Chapel in Modesto yeah. that they were there, and. His drummer was so good. He was so fire. And he had the simplest drum kit that I've ever seen. And it was just like one snare, one tom and a floor tom. And like, kick like drum? he had a kick drum and maybe one ride. It might have been even no toms. Maybe it might have been just a snare. Yeah, it was like a, a kick drum, snare, floor tom. And in a hi hat and one ride. I mean, there was nothing, and he worked it so hard. He was so good, yeah. um, and just using those those pieces, you know, pieces that he had. And so maybe sometimes you teach yourself to do less. You um, you remove options, you know, for a drummer or a pianist or keyboardist. You say maybe I'm uh, just playing in this register. Hey, the bass is taking care of the bass. You know, the vocals are here, the guitar's up here. Maybe I'm just playing in this section. You'll see a band and they've got a keyboard player and then go watch what they're doing with their hands. They're not doing this, okay? A good keyboard player is yeah. about that much and it's enough. Maybe a little, you know, everyone's Maybe going. there's a, yeah. But and then, I would say also advice for beginners. So if you're going to start to incorporate this, you know, to your band, you know, people are going to, feel like, well, man, I'm, I'm bored. What am I doing? You know, find times for them to shine. You know, maybe like yeah. here's a solo over here or here's a yeah. thing where we're doing this. You know, I know for me, it helps me to know, hey, I got a solo coming up. Yeah. You know, if, if I'm just playing two notes the whole song, you yeah. know, it's fine because I got the solo coming up. I have a bass player that can do upright and, and fretless and the whole thing, you know. And to make him just go, you know, boom, to boom, you know, that kind of a thing. But there's, uh, we hit this song and uh, it was kind of a jazzy song. And I said, I want you to own this song, do whatever you want to do. And he was able then, just like you said, to step in and really make this song shine. He owned that song. It was really great. So I want to get into it 
And I, I, did you have something in mind, or because I, I kind of had an idea, but I, it's, this is your this is your passion of something we could do together to um, to to demonstrate doing less, or to you know, do you, I don't know if you want to talk about one of the songs you talked about, or if you wanted to actually play some music together. Uh, a song that I would love to do is "Into the Arms of Grace" by Paul Paul Oakley. Okay, and uh, you have a part that yes, you know how to play. And I can play that song, and it's a simple song. We don't have to do the whole thing. Sure. But, uh, um, so here's the deal. Um, I need to change the mics for that. So we're going to cut to that. We're going to film that later, and then we'll splice it in here, and then we'll come back afterwards. Yeah. Cool. All right, I've got the guitars out. I got them mic'd up. I don't know how well this is going to work. Um, but um, we're going to play a song, worship song called Into the Arms of Grace I Run, a song we've played dozens, if not hundreds of times. Um, I basically know what he wants. Uh, on this song, but we were just jamming a second ago, and even then he was like, no, don't do that. So, and I said, hey, save it for the camera. So we're gonna do, I'm not, we're not gonna sing, like I said, to avoid copyright or whatever, but we're just gonna do uh, intro, verse, chorus, and then we'll stop, and he'll give me some notes, and we'll try again. Okay? Here we go. Uh, go ahead. I thought that was beautiful. It was awesome. Could it be better? Let's see. How do we make it better? So all those things where you want to hit those big, so like the, if you made them, if, so like you kind of took over the sonic space there. Okay. Okay. Can you do it where you're still hitting those chords, okay. but you're letting it. You're letting both guitars have a part there. Okay. Yeah. So, so just pull back. So think about how strong yeah, pull, I'm playing there. Yeah. Just you know, and and I loved all your lead work that you did. Okay. There was some stuff you threw in. It was so nice. Do less. Would it be better if it was less? You can tell me. Never to do, know. You, on the the show about doing less, you're gonna tell me to do less. Yeah, I'm telling you to okay. do less. Uh, all right. So, and I'm kind of trying to do less. I hope you hear yeah. that too. So let's try it. So this is the, the less version. This is the, and maybe there's no difference. Maybe there is. I don't okay. know. How do we do that? You know, think so about The what, intro is what it is. Yeah. Uh, adding a guitar, or so, I mean, adding a drum, adding a bass, adding keyboards, yeah. all that stuff. And coming, uh, the, the band part of me is like, uh, could you give me a count this time so I can start with sure. you? Sure. Two, three.
I think if we had a third time, it'd be even better. Yeah. I got a little, I, I stopped. I got busy again at the end. So notice my hand as we're doing this. Go, you know, what if we watch? I'm doing, I'm doing less with my hand. So, but it's like hitting the air because it's, it wants to hit the strings, but I'm intentionally making sure that I'm not doing that. So listen. That also keeps the rhythm going, which is good. That might be my pro tip of uh, yeah. of how to do less is just you don't have to hit the strings with those mo motions. You yeah. can keep your hand going and just lift your hand. Take it off and yeah. uh, see what happens. Cool. Yeah. All right, we're cutting back to the show. All right, and we're back. That was awesome. You played amazingly. That was wonderful. <laughs> we haven't played yet, so <laughs> uh, probably it was horrible. Uh, it's okay. what I, I dropped my cards on the floor again, people. He <laughs> hasn't figured it out. There's this thing called the paper clip. <laughs> I want to get a, I want to get a ring, but Wait. I actually forgot cards. So I just printed these on paper. But um, so now that we've played some music mm -hmm. and we've talked about this, in your journey of doing less, what is n plus one? What is next for you? I would like to just be able to do it. That would be so good, you know, and to not be. Um, you know, in love with whatever it is I'm doing to not be able to scale it back. And so, uh, you know, I have a, I have a, a great band. Um, one of the things that I'm learning right now, so having been in church my entire musical life, doing church stuff, I'm, where my biggest uh, hole in my ability is, is just playing, just leads in uh, like regular pentatonic scale, leads, blues, leads, stuff that is, uh, you know, rock and roll leads. And I really don't know how to do that. I play melodic leads, so think if you're, uh, you know, Mark Knopfler or Dire Straits, his stuff is really pretty all touch. And so I can do that, but just playing like, like I can't even play Johnny Be Good. You know, any of the stuff that, you know, that you're, that you can play like it. You can play like every single lead for every cover song that any band would ever do. I can't do any of them. Well, so. my trick is I play the first few notes and then I play whatever I want. And that's the trick to being in a cover band. Uh, I actually find playing those solos note for note, I found it really boring and restrictive. And so what I did when I was in a cover band is, is I would learn the first part. And so people go, oh yeah, this is the solo. And then I would just play whatever I wanted after that. So. <laughs> Not a hundred percent true. You learned what? What is it? Uh, with or without you? You two? Uh, what was the you two song you guys did? Was it Streets or? No, uh, it was. We did one. Uh, one love. Yeah. One love. We did one, and we did um, Streets Have No Name, Streets. and we did um, With or Without You, and I think that was the one. Yeah, I think With or Without You was. Yeah. You know, and and you've got a bunch of stuff going on. I have a lot of stuff going on. You know, on. and I have a whole patch. But you're also you've also in that song you were allowing your effects to work and you were allowing the parts to to be heard before you jumped on top right. of them and did some. So yeah, yeah. kudos to you. You were able to do it. You know, thank you. challenge. Um, well, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. Um, you know, we're visiting in beautiful Dayton, Nevada. Uh, right now for Thanksgiving weekend, uh, before Thanksgiving, actually the week before Thanksgiving. So whenever this goes out, that's when this was recorded. Um, but I want to say thank you so much. If someone wanted to connect with you, how would they do that? I know they can attend church here in Dayton. If you're in Dayton, Calvary Chapel, Dayton Valley in Dayton, you would love it. So much love in that church is a beautiful thing. Um, so that's one way that they could connect with you. Uh, you don't do much social media, right? I try to do as little as possible. So, yeah. yeah. So if you want, uh, just check them out through church. Uh, if yeah. you're visiting that church, uh, does have, uh, you know, their, uh, all their services online and, um, they'll, they'll do two recordings. They'll actually put two videos out. One that's just a preaching that's shorter. One, the one that's longer, the same, the same date would be the one that includes some music and you yeah. can hear the band. And he's recovering from shoulder surgery, so he, he hasn't been in the band for a bit, but he's coming back in yeah. a couple weeks. So I'll be back after Christmas. He's looking forward to that. Um, he was We were playing music last night and it was hurting him, but it, it, was. it was a good pain. It was the pain I don't have recovery. any calluses. <laughs> Come on. I don't know why your calluses disappear so quick. My calluses, I don't know. It's, it's been almost three months. So, well, yeah. it's true. Okay, so we're going to get out of here. We're going to ask my two favorite questions. The first is the name drop question. I want you to tell us a very short story of the most famous person you've ever met. Um, 
I don't really have anybody, but I will tell you my story about uh, calling uh, Lindy Fraley. Okay. Oh yeah. I called Lindy Fraley. He's a tell him who he is. So um, in guitar, they have these things called pickups. Okay, which you can see up here. They, if you don't know what, it, you know, the, the pickup on an electric guitar grabs the sound so you can send it down to your guitar effects and amplify it. And um, in the guitar pickup world, there's a couple people that are kind of like rock stars, which is, of course, Seymour Duncan uh, is an amazing guitar manufacturer. Yeah. He's got a whole, you know, empire, you know, of, they make effects and, and everything. They make everything. And then um, the friend of one of the people that was the first wave of of boutique pickup whiners um, was um, Lindy Freeland. Lindy Freeland. Yeah. Um, and I had some Freeland pickups for a long time, and they were wonderful. Yeah. Um, but tell us the story. You so know. anyway, um, I have a guitar, and uh, I had bought it. You know. Gosh, how old are you? Forty years ago, and um, too. and I had uh, bought it from a guy that I worked with, and eventually I uh, refinished that guitar and gave it to my father-in-law, Dan Widener, best man I ever knew in my life. And so, as he got older, then uh, he decided to give it back to me. So I got that guitar, his Epiphone guitar, and. Epiphone amp, got it back. And it's so, a, it's a what? It's Epiphone Melody Maker? Is that what it is? Or I don't even remember. It's what it it's is. it's a it's a cool guitar. It's vintage. It's very thin, mahogany, solid mahogany. Uh, one pickup, single pickup. Yeah, yeah. And the pickup, I I hated the tone. Right. Of this Didn't pickup. sound right. It was horrible. Yeah. And so we played it at my grandpa's funeral. I played it there. I think pretty sure it was like, bad. So um, uh, no, it wasn't his funeral. It was at his 80th birthday party. Right. We played it, right. and it was the only electric guitar that was there. I didn't yeah. bring one. And it was, and that was whatever. before he gave it back to me, right. and he had it. So, right. Yeah, it was bad. So anyway, I have been, for the last 10 years, uh, restoring this guitar. I took, it, I took all the finish back off that I did, everything that I did, and I wanted to take it back to its original shape. I found out it was worth a whole lot more that way. Plus, you know, I, did, I didn't do a perfect job. I was trying to do a burst. Sunburst on this guitar. Anyway, so I wanted to replace that pickup because it didn't like the way it sounded. So I called uh, Lindy Fraylin. Adam told me what he wanted because it's gonna go to him, um, and he wanted a he wanted a P90 pickup. And so, but the the slot for this pickup is not the size of a P90. Right. It's a slot for a single coil. And so what I wanted was a single coil pickup that was actually a P90. Right. So I. I called Lindy Fraylin, the uh, the company. You know, he's got a company, and um, told him what I was looking for. Okay, didn't you email them? Might have emailed them or called them or something. You know, I don't remember. I, I think you them. emailed them, and yeah. he didn't he call you he back. He called me. Right. right. He's like, I don't want to do emails. Yeah. Because they take too long. He says, I this is all I do all day long is call people, and so now I'm on the phone with Lindy Fraylin. Okay, I'm, it's like being on the phone. In, in music for as a music guy, this is like being on the phone with Prince or somebody, you know. Yeah. So this is like a guy who knows everything about pickups, who's made some of the, pick up some of the most famous pickups for some of the most famous guitar players in the world. He's been doing it. it for forty years. I lost it. I could not talk to this guy. I was like, oh, uh, 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 uh. anyway, it was like yeah. a girl crush kind of a thing. It was horrible. It was yeah. the worst. He's and just the guy I, that makes pickups. I hope I never yeah. do that again. But yeah. anyway, that's my. That's cool. Name drop card, name drop Lindy yeah, Fraylin. Yeah, you, you yeah. talked to Lindy on the phone, which I have not done. Yeah. Okay, this is the last question we'll get out of here. Uh, what is your favorite all-time cartoon theme song? All right, so you remember I'm old, 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 right? So in your it's generation, like, we're like probably 350 years old. Animaniacs, but that's not my favorite one. I think it's great. It's a killer. Yeah. yeah, but I'm old school, you know, uh, super old. Um, Popeye the Sailor Man, believe it or not. No. No, seriously, and I'll tell you what, think about this, think about this. An entire generation of kids ate spinach because they knew. It was all propaganda. They the knew that spinach. if, you know, if, if I eat my spinach, I'm going to be strong to the strong finish, to the finish, just like Popeye the Sailor yeah. Man. So oh that's my gosh. That's all right. And I apologize now, but that's, no, that's all right. Hey, you know, that's all right. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. I love you. Yeah, my I love dad, you. And I love you. 
and you're a I great love playing with you. I love playing with you. Sort of. <laughs> He's a great father and a great grandfather, and yeah. uh, you know, yeah. seeing you play with the kids this weekend has brought joy to my heart. So, nice. Anyway, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you know, the last thing you can do, uh, you know, if you are, if you appreciated this show, I would love it if you gave the show a like. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, click subscribe. That would really help us out. Um, if you're listening to this and you heard something that you think that uh, someone else in your life might appreciate, uh, share this with them. So just grab the episode and uh, send it over to them in a text or an email. Uh, grow the show that way. And then the last thing I want to remind you about is the Facebook group. Uh, we have a Facebook group, M Plus One Podcast, um, and we're having some fun over there. So you can uh, find that on Facebook and join up. We can talk about whatever. We can talk about strategies for doing less. Um, I'll also post links to these videos in the Facebook group. So if you don't want to go hunt through the show notes, you can just go to the Facebook group and I'll have all of the videos that we talked about in the show, in the Facebook group. So, well, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, until next time, you don't be a jerk. That's tough. That's tough.